What's a disturbing secret you've learned about someone close to you? Story 1. The 24 hours before my dad died, stage 4 lung cancer, he was in the ER and then the ICU, and we were unable to be with him because of the hospital COVID rules. My mother, sister, and myself had been texting and calling him all day and got no response. My mother even called the hospital and spoke with one of his ICU nurses who said he was awake and communicating fine. He passed very quickly at 3.30 a.m. the next morning. We were allowed to be at his bedside, but by then he was no longer conscious, so we said our goodbyes and he was gone. Later that morning, while my mom slept, I was calling cremation services to schedule his body for pickup at the hospital and going through his bag of belongings the hospital had returned to us. His phone was there and I wanted to read all our texts and take some comfort in my last words to him. I opened his phone and all of our texts had not been read, not mine or my mom and sisters. I thought this was so odd but figured he must have been suffering so much he couldn't find the strength. I began to scroll through his apps and noticed a chat app I'd vaguely heard of. I can't recall the name but it essentially works like WhatsApp. I opened the app and saw a single contact with a female name. I started reading and realized my dad has been chatting with this girl hourly for the last 24 hours as far back as I could scroll. He was calling her princess and telling her he loved her, and that she was saying she was scared for him and wanted to know what was going on, why he was in the ER, etc. I scrolled back enough to know that this was someone he was having, at the very least, an emotional affair with. My grief was completely hijacked by hurt and anger, and a week later I tracked the girl down and spoke to her via DMs and found out she was 19 years old. She was 17 when they met. He was her high school bus driver and she told me they had been dating for almost two years. My dad was 66 years old when he died and dating someone younger than his grandchildren, someone he chose to spend his last moments with and say his last goodbyes to. I hope it made him happy, but it sure is an awful secret to live the rest of my life with, a secret that will forever overshadow my entire relationship with my dad with no chance to ever speak to him about it. It's the one secret I wish I'd never found out. I feel this one. Mum found out about a similar scenario accidentally when she was on a holiday with my dad. He still maintains he has no idea what she saw and nothing is going on. I'm glad therapy is helping you. I'm sorry that you had to find out like that. I'm a trainee clinical psychologist and to me this reads like an act of escapism that took him back to his younger years, before age-related serious illness and the idea of an impending death. The fact he did not open your messages suggests to me that it could be this, that it was all too painful to read, so he reverted to speaking to this girl in his final days as she was the escapism, his carefree make-believe slash fantasy world relationship, if that makes sense. It's the ultimate denial, as reading loving messages from you all, who he loved so much, was just too painful for him. It may have been denial or escapism, but it's also horrible to leave a child with this weighty information. I would have been devastated just knowing he wasn't seeing my messages, but to have this other very young person in his life is too much to take. I don't know how this person is holding it in. Story 2. She was my best friend of seven years. We had literally been through it all together. I moved out of state with my now husband, but she convinced us both to move back to be closer with her after about a year. We had no real ties to the state we had tried out, so we said, screw it, let's go back. She's basically family. We were all so happy to be reunited. She was over almost every night for dinner. We all laughed and talked and had a blast. Best year of my life. Then, slowly, she started trying to turn my husband and I against each other. Anytime we had an argument, like any couple does, she would text each of us about how right we were, trying to foster animosity between the two of us. With me, she started talking about how she had a plan B for us, that if my husband and I couldn't make it work, I could move in with her and we'd live happy lives together. With my husband, she started talking about her infertility issues and how she wanted to have a kid just like him. She just needed a sperm donor. This all happened at around the same time and my husband and I compared texts and figured it out. She wanted to take his sperm and have a baby with me. When confronted about it, she refused to admit anything and started lashing out at both of us. It got to the point where she would show up unannounced, banging on the door, demanding a place in our home. It was so terrifying and panic-inducing that we ended up having to move and change our phone numbers. I guess it's so disturbing because I had never had a friend like her, only to find out that she did care about me, but in such an unhealthy and scary way. 
But yeah, that's my story. Husband and I are great now, by the way. Okay, so let me get this straight. She had an undying love for you and thought you felt the same and figured she could have a baby with you if the sperm donor was your husband? I have a strikingly similar story, but it was a male friend of mine trying to get me out of the picture and get with my wife. When we all realized the depth of the manipulation, we were stunned. I say all because there were more people involved. Dude was really trying to get me out of the picture altogether and take over my place in all my friendships slash relationships. It was seriously some movie level stuff. This is throwing single white female vibes. That movie is so creepy. I think mostly because it was well acted and seemed so possible. Story 3. A work colleague appeared on the front page of a national newspaper for a life of fraudulent qualifications. He claimed medical and law degrees, was a brigadier in the army reserves, and was the CEO for a major health fund. He actually was a brigadier in the army reserves, but that and the health fund role were largely built on the fraudulent qualifications and a progression of jobs, also based on these claims. In reality, the only qualification he actually held was as a mortuary assistant. Not even his wife knew the fraudulent degrees had been gained when he was in the army reserves recruiting and he had access to submitted position applications. He came undone when he applied for a government job and some flags were raised by the recruitment people. He tried to withdraw the application but didn't realize that an application for a government role has the same weight as a statutory declaration and cannot be withdrawn. It all went south very quickly and he ended up doing jail time. I had a very similar experience. CEO and interim medical director had worked at an FQHC for several years, claimed to be an MD, PhD with a master's. It all unraveled when he gave me nonsensical med advice, and shortly after I was doing a personal file audit and his file was missing. My director found his diplomas in his office, and they looked fake. Between him and the board chair, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars in federal fraud. Thankfully, the medical director title was mostly non-practicing. I have a friend whose brother spent some time in jail, didn't get any degree, etc. When he was like 30, he realized he had to get his life together, so he applied for a job, lied in his resume, and got a very decent job and rocked at it. He quit after one year because he wanted to create a track record of former employees, so when he applied to a new job, all they did was just call the old employer and assumed they had checked his records. Then he quit again after one year to create a longer employment record and this was now like 15 years ago. He is still at his third job, bought a house, got married, makes good money, and he is actually a rock star at work. In all honesty, good for him. He turned his life around after all, and he is in a management position, so it's not really hurting anyone that he doesn't have a degree. I know people who have lied on their resume by changing dates or exaggerating their duties and skills, but never inventing a whole degree, especially a medical degree. That's beyond just deceitful. Story 4 my mom received birthday cards with money in them for years from her parents. She kept the cards with the money in them, saving to buy a piano or sentimental reasons. My sister, who has repeatedly stolen from family members, found the collection of cards and money and took them. My mom only wanted the cards back when she realized what happened. My sister denied everything. My mom's sister would scam their mom out of money. My grandmother suffered from dementia in the last couple of years of her life. My aunt would borrow money from my grandmother knowing she would forget it. She did this repeatedly. At one point before I was born, she began dating a friend of my dad. They told him that if she ever tried to get him to sign anything, he would refuse. A couple of weeks later, she tried to get him to co-sign on her loans. My mom hasn't talked to her since my grandmother's funeral and is never planning to. She absolutely hates her and the sentiment is shared by the rest of us, especially since my grandmother ended up with huge debts and my mom had to help her out with a payment plan with the bank. I would like to note that when my little sister was born, she moved in with us for a while to help out my parents so that they could relax, and I didn't feel overlooked. I was three. So that's the kind of person she scammed out of money. My mom was dying in the hospital from pancreatic cancer. She kept a stack of single dollar bills and quarters in the side drawer to give to nurses to get her candy bars from a vending machine. Mom was so hungry but real food hurt to eat, so she sucked on Hershey bars to stop the hunger pains. Anyways, my mother passed out on morphine drip when my sister came by to visit. Mom tried to stay awake, but she was there because she knows my sister is a thief, but eventually fell back asleep. When my mom woke up, all her money was gone, and so was my sister. She just came by to steal, not visit, and broke my mom's heart. 
Once my mom was sent home on hospice, my sister would steal her pain meds as she slept. I've never told my sister, but I know my mother died being upset with her for stealing from her while she was dying. Mom never confronted my sister, and I'm sure she thinks she got away with it, but my mother told me, and I haven't forgotten. I've talked to hospice nurses who say when a patient opts to stay at home and have the nurses visit, the medicine is kept in a lockbox and one family member has a key. When the nurse visits, they count the amount of pills to make sure none have been stolen. I cannot imagine what goes through a person's head that they can take a supposed loved one's pain medicine when they're dying, or steal their belongings when they're dying, or as soon as they're gone. It's astonishing to me. Story 5 after my husband died in 2020, I found out he had been having an affair with a 30-year-old. He was 55. She apparently aborted his baby. Everything he told me about his prior life was a lie, second marriage for both of us. And he had been having sex with men since he was in his early 20s. To sum it up, I didn't know this man at all. We had been together 10 years and married for 6. My mom was married to my dad for 30 years before she was able to see him for who he really was. He's a raging narcissist, but somehow she couldn't see it, despite everyone else knowing and even telling her. After the divorce started, she also found out he was having affairs constantly and also harassing a lot of women around him. She's also struggling to come to terms with the fact that she never actually knew the man she was married to and that the man she loved had never existed. I had the same. I'd been with my partner for 16 years when he died at 39. The amount of women that turned up at the funeral was amazing, all saying how lovely and amazing a partner he was. He hardly went out and told me every day how much he loved me, so it was a massive shock to the system to realize we'd been living a lie. Imagine living your life, being grateful for having a wonderful partner, and in the middle of the loss and grieving you find out they were a piece of garbage. That would throw you for a loop. It would be one thing to find out when they're alive and you can yell at them or whatever, but how do you get rid of that anger when they're no longer there? Story 6 my great-grandmother was married to three different people at the same time. The men were from different branches of the military. She was collecting all three of their paychecks at a time. My great-grandfather is recorded under the census under multiple names, some Greek and some Turkish sounding. He was Greek as far as I know, but born in the Ottoman Empire, because apparently he would rent apartments under fake names and leave when he couldn't afford payments. My great-grandmother was born in her home in rural Pennsylvania. She got married at 14 and gave birth to my grandpa at 15. She lived near a grocery store, so never needed to drive. My grandpa did very well for himself, so he took care of everything for her. When they decided to move her to a swanky nursing home, they found out she didn't have a birth certificate or social security number. That was an absolute mess, but that kind of thing happened back then. Also, think about all the jokes of dads leaving for cigarettes and never coming back. No, that was real. They would leave and just start new families. I want to say these kinds of things are harder to do now that we have more documentation and electronic records, but I've never tried to have another family, so I don't know. Story 7 graduated boot camp and wondered why my brother wouldn't talk to me. It turns out he was sleeping with my ex while I was there instead of delivering my letters. Guess guilt ate him up and he thought it was simpler to keep up the lie and not have a brother, right up until an old friend from my hometown told me what happened. I confronted my brother and he kept lying, so I gave his girlfriend at the time proof of it. She tore him apart, made him tell me everything, about a 30-minute phone call as I'm stationed on the other side planet, but it ended with me telling him I love him but I never want to hear from him again. And I hope his life gets better. Haven't talked since. My mom's sister told my mother on the day she got engaged to my father that they were having an affair. And my aunt is so crazy that my mom never figured out if she was lying or not. My mom said when she confronted my dad at the time that he insisted her sister was lying and she believed him. To be fair, my aunt has quite the history of preposterous lies. She insisted for years that Nicolas Cage was her boyfriend, like straight up delusional, and also a history of wanting to ruin my mom's life. So I completely understand why my mom dismissed it. But now neither of us have a clue what the truth really was and neither of us talked to my dad or my aunt, so I guess we'll never know. The dad was like, all right, I'm just gonna sleep with the sister who cried wolf. If anyone starts to believe there's an affair, I'll just bring up the Nicolas Cage thing. That's probably a fair assessment. He figured he could get away with it. Was the mom's sister warning her to not marry him because he was having an affair or bragging about it? That's pretty messed up. Story 8. 
When I was young, I had vague ideas about my uncle being dodgy. At family events, such as weddings, etc., my parents would tell me and some of my cousins to stay away from him. When I was in year 8, we were doing a lesson in citizenship class where we had to cut out pieces from a newspaper. No idea why, and I came across an article saying he'd been recommitted to Broadmoor Prison. Went home and googled him and found out he'd been in prison in the 80s for kidnapping and abusing someone, and had been in and out of prison since for other offenses. He also tried to sue the son once for defamation since they printed something incorrect about him. He was awarded one pence by the court because it technically was defamation, but it was agreed that what they had printed couldn't have damaged his reputation any further. All I know is that he was in a halfway house for a long time, however from what I've gathered he was released around five years ago. Tragic and horrifying story all around, but the one pence judgment due to his worthless reputation is the best court story I've heard in a while. I'm sorry you had to deal with finding all this out, but that's an almost cinematic way to come across that info. Cutting up random scraps of newspapers for a school project and finding a story about your own family? The reason I picked this story was because of the one pence defamation award. That was a good judgment. Nope, sorry, the newspaper doesn't owe you that much because everyone already thinks you're awful. Case closed. Story 9. So my grandmother, who's been estranged from my family for a long time now for a multitude of reasons, has this weird thing where she has to share food with people. Are you ordering steak at the restaurant? Well, she's got to order the same thing even if she doesn't like steak. Try her drink. It's really good take the first bite of chicken to let her know if it's any good. This always really annoyed me because I hate sharing food. One day, I brought it up to my mom and she was like, oh yeah, grandma is afraid of being poisoned, so she wants other people to try it first. So let me get this straight. Grandma thinks someone is trying to poison her so she has me try the food first, and it makes so much sense looking back because she literally would not take a bite of anything she ordered until someone else had a bite first. Thanks, grandma. As someone that weirdly enough has the same delusion, though it isn't as strong all the time thankfully, I am fully aware it's insane and very unlikely my food is poisoned, but I just don't believe it. So letting someone else eat it and not drop dead, which I don't actually think will happen, soothes this weird fear that I know is unreasonable but just can't shake. If the delusion is strong that day and I do eat it myself first, I can get so anxious that I feel sick and may actually puke. Right now I can say, yeah, that's just anxiety, but at that moment all I can think is, oh no, the food was clearly poisoned, poisoned or spoiled or bad. It's not just poison I'm afraid of, also just spoiled food. Maybe it's because I've got a terrible sense of smell. I honestly can't think of a good reason this delusion grips me. I can even have it with foods that barely ever spoil, like honey or peanut butter. I struggled with a bit of an eating disorder and what helped me get out of it was food sharing. I didn't tell anyone, but getting someone to take the first bite off my plate and convince me it was good helped me start eating. It could really just be something as innocuous as that. Very interesting ideas. Maybe grandma had OCD or an eating disorder. It's possible. I've never read about this phenomenon from these points of view, a from the inside perspective. Story 10. My now ex-wife and I were having problems. I was certain that she was cheating on me. I found her notes where she was figuring out and had added up how much I was worth dead. I watch a lot of true crime and life insurance is pretty high up on the list of reasons to kill a spouse until they get caught and sentenced to life without parole. Idiots. The best was the woman who hired an undercover cop to kill her husband. The police set up an elaborate scene where she came home and they told her her husband was dead. She was pretending to cry and be devastated. and they asked her to come to the station. At the station, she found out her husband was alive and well, and it was so funny to see her try to process what was going on. She still tried to maintain her innocence. She ended up getting 16 years for her stunt. I had something similar happen to me. I went through an ex-fiance's journals and found pages upon pages of notes written about me, how he had cheated on me, and how he was just using me to prove to himself that he could control someone else's life like a god. I'm still recovering. Yikes. I watch a lot of true crime stories like Forensic Files too, and as soon as you hear them say the family member took out a life insurance policy, you know where it's going. Story 11 my former best friend cheated on his wife multiple times. I found out because he tried getting me to cheat on my wife. He was the best man for our wedding. Completely messed up. 
I'm not married, and my friend wasn't either, but found out quickly she was a serial cheater after a few months of friendship. She never encouraged me, but I ended the friendship after she begged me to cover for her multiple times. It was two different guys, both who I had met many times and were super nice. I had a roommate in college who did this, unfortunately. In college, she had the sweetest, highly attractive, smart, and just downright good boyfriend. Invited her boss over one night, and I woke up to her shaking me awake, saying her boyfriend is at the door and she needs me to stall. Now, I was friends with her boyfriend and didn't want his feelings hurt. Went to the living room. It was trashed with empty beer bottles and an empty tequila bottle. I had slept through quite the evening, apparently. Opened the door to let him in while my roommate hid the guy in the bathroom, and then came over to the door and took him back to her room. She shut the door and the boss dude tiptoed out to the front door and skedaddled. Told her if she ever put me in that situation again, I would tell her boyfriend. Welp, fast forward six months. We are living off campus. She brought someone home. Boyfriend showed up because she wasn't answering him via text or phone for more than 24 hours. I let him in and said she's upstairs. Grabbed my purse and my then boyfriend and I got the heck out of Dodge. Still haunts me that I let her get away with it the first time. I moved out shortly after that. Still friends with her former boyfriend though. Good guy. Tell them. Seriously, if someone's cheating, that needs to be uncovered. Then both people can decide if they want to try and work on it or if they're done. The serial cheaters aren't going to suddenly stop one day. If it's a habit, a rush, an addiction, whatever, it's not going to stop in my opinion. The other person should know. Story 12. Not quite as disturbing as others, but someone who I thought was a close friend that I considered a sister and could trust openly had a secret blog about how much she hated me. I found out when we were around 21 or so and she handed me her phone and asked me to check something on her Tumblr while she was driving. She was still signed into her private one, but I didn't say anything and switched over to the public one. It took me way longer than it should have to let that friendship go. That's awful. It reminds me of the best friend I ever had. We had been friends for a decade or so, shared the same first name, and in high school, people would be like, here come the two Johns, jokes about us being lovers, all in good fun, no bullying, but then two years after high school with no warning, he never talked to me again. When I called him for the last time, which was about the 12th unanswered phone call, his father answered. He and I were buds too. Nice guy. He said to me, John, I don't know why, but John doesn't want to come to the phone. I was silent, didn't know what to say. He was nice and got me off the phone. That was 28 years ago. To this day, I'll never know what happened. And he was like a brother to me, and he passed in his early 40s. I'll never understand. Such is life. This happened to me when I was 16. Really hurt. When you invest yourself in a relationship, whether it's a friend or partner, it hurts deeply to be betrayed or forgotten. There's a loss, a hole where you thought your heart was. It really cuts you down. Story 13. This is super simple, but my dad kept his cigarette habit hidden from me and my sister. Imagine my shock when I go outside looking for him and see a huge cloud of smoke. Nine-year-old me was dumbfounded. Also made sense why he always had to get his wallet from his car, lol. We found a pipe with cleaning tools and everything, and apple-scented tobacco in my dad's work desk when we were cleaning it out after he passed away unexpectedly. I kept that tobacco for years until the scent finally faded away completely. Point of fact, a few years later I hid my own cigarette cigarette smoking from my mom and sister, and extended family for years until I had to quit. So I guess it runs in the family. My wife and I did tell our kids we used to smoke though, to tell them what a bad idea it is. My dad quit smoking for a while, but didn't want to tell my sister when he started up again because she would be furious with him. She was a little ball of rage as a teenager. I once came downstairs for some water and my dad was smoking and fell over himself trying to hide because he thought it was my sister, which I mocked him about for years. Smoking is an addiction that's been turned from widely accepted to widely shamed in a short period of time because of the health risks. It's very hard to quit, and the tobacco is manufactured to do just that, keep you smoking. Story 14. My dad had a sister only a few people knew about. She was born with a brain defect. My grandparents kept her in the apartment for all her life because they were ashamed. My friend of 19 years. Within the last 5 years, so 14 years into the friendship, I found out they had a sibling. But the sibling was mentally ill and was shipped off to an institution by their parents because that's what was done at the time, in the early 70s. The friend didn't tell me because they were ashamed. Not their fault, but I was shocked. 
I have an uncle who lives his entire life in the attic, never went outside or to school, but was well taken care of by his parents who were ashamed and tried to hide him. This is disgusting to me. A disabled person is still a person worthy of attention and care. I know times have changed, so this is less likely to happen, but this still makes me angry. Disabled people need more help and are the ones least able to get that help. It's a catch-22. Story 15 that my mom cheated on my dad for 20 years and still hasn't told him to this day. I'm still trying to figure out what to do and how to go about the situation and exposing the truth about her to my dad, but I'm afraid he would die of a broken heart. Worst thing is, she cheated with my godfather, who used to come to the house and drink coffee with my mom and dad every day. As a kid who found out that one parent was cheating on the other, there is no good time to tell them. My brother, 14, and I, 18, both discovered that our dad was cheating cheating on our mom separately, and kept putting off telling her for over a year because it was Christmas, and then she had a business trip, and then it was her birthday, and then it was this and then it was that, etc. One day I got in trouble and my dad said you're a disgrace to this family and out flew the words that he and mom were not prepared for. I know it's hard. I know it will change everything if you tell your dad or confront your mom. Just wanted to give you some solidarity. I found this out a few years ago as well. Found out my dad has been cheating on my mother with men for at least 10 years now. And that's how far his blog history goes. Haven't confronted him or told my mother. I think she knows. But it would have to be an insane situation for me to confront him or tell my mother because I might just be misunderstanding their situation for all I know. Maybe mom knows and accepts it. I love both of them, seeing as at least on the outside, they're awesome parents. But dang, did my dad mess all that up. I almost want to tell them so they can just get divorced and meet new people and have good lives, but they're retired and content with their situations as far as I know. This is a really tough situation to put your kids into. If it was anything other than the children finding out, I'd say tell them. But having a parent-child relationship dynamic is different. If the child is a minor, they would be potentially upending the lives of everyone in the family. Not that it would be the child's fault. What a mess. Story 16 that my ostensibly pious and God-fearing married Mormon dad was siphoning off shared savings slash retirement money to bankroll strip clubs, massage parlors, and visits to street corners for longer than my entire life. Had I not personally caught him red-handed, I would never have believed it. My gob is still smacked. I was serving cocktails at a strip club. I wasn't embarrassed or ashamed of my job, but mostly kept it on a need-to-know basis, just to keep a few sweet old religious aunts from dropping dead of shock. My dad Dad clearly didn't expect to see anyone who also wouldn't want to get busted at a strip club bar. So this brazen piece of crap had his shameless self comfortably nestled in a big velvet chair with a 90% naked stripper in his lap on a night I was working. We made deer in the headlight eye contact. He ordered a Diet Coke from me, probably because he was just too shocked to do anything else. We didn't have a good relationship leading up to this, and I didn't care who knew where I had gainful employment. So of course I happily busted his story wide open. I think I had both my sisters on the phone before he even left. Ordering a Diet Coke from you just seems like the part with the most audacity. This story reminded me of a story my parents told me about the man who was their bishop when they were newlyweds. Shortly after they were married, the bishop's wife died in a terrible car crash in Utah just after they dropped their oldest child off at college. Everyone was devastated and rallied around him until it emerged he'd staged the crash and killed his wife because he was having an affair with their teenage babysitter. Oh, and he was also stealing the tithing money from his congregation. Fake piety is all too common. Having standing in the community by being a God-fearing Christian means less and less to me the older I get. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have a similar story to these that you would like to share with us, please leave it down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and subscribe. For more videos like this one right now, please stop by our channel. Thanks again, and see you next time.